Hi folks and welcome back to The Plot. Today is Sunday the 19th of December. We're properly coming into autumn. <laughs> the sun is out and it's 20 degrees. <laughs> I should be in shorts. I'm absolutely cooking already. <laughs> And it's really good news, this kind of late warm spell for my chilli peppers. They really need all the heat and sun that they can get. But for the rest of the plot, it is really starting to wind down. And today I'm going to be doing a bit of tidying up. I'm going to be getting the last of things like the potatoes out the bed. I'm sure there's lots of other jobs. I don't really know. Cover crops is going to be a main thing. But I've got quite a lot of time up here today. So we'll just see what we get up to, shall we? I really hope you enjoy. So one of the first things on my to-do list today is the apples. Wow, there's a spider on this one, okay. Um, the crop this year, not been great, um, but I have been up on my lunch breaks and I've been kind of picking what I could see that looked okay and ripe. But the thing is that these are infested, I think, with something called codling moth caterpillars and they make the smallest little holes in the surface and then they burrow into the middle. And if you're gonna make cider or something like that, it's not too big an issue. And I have a friend who is making cider and is happily gonna receive these apples, but I'm gonna cut into a few of the ones I can see they have a little codling moth entrance and just see what they're like inside. Because if they're, if they're really horrible, most of these look okay so far, if they're really horrible, then they'll be too bad even to use for cider. Yeah, so this one looks like it's got just a tiny little hole at the top and a little bit of kind of frass, which is a bit of an indicator. So if I cut into it, you can see there is some evidence of in insect damage and there's a little bit of kind of webbing in the middle, but for the most part, the flesh on here is okay. And that is fine to use for something like cider. But there's one I cut open just now, <laughs> which had gone completely bad in the middle. So I'm gonna cut a few more of these and if there's a couple that are bad in the middle, that's fine. The, my cider making friend will just have to weed those out. But if they're mostly like this, then that's fine and they can be used. So here's hoping. So the good news is vast majority of these apples were fine, especially for cider. If they've got a little bit of damage, it's not, it's not the end of the world. But the bad news is that this is pretty much my entire apple harvest this year. We have been taking a few to use just in the kitchen or at home for eating, and I've snacked on a few while working on the allotment, which has been very nice. But compared to last year, I think I had about four times this many last year. So it's been not the best year for the tree and there have been a lot that I've kind of missed or, or not quite got. So there's quite a lot on the understory, but that's fine. I, f I figure that that will feed the soil and it should kind of help boost the tree for next year. The actual situation under there is pretty dire as well. The blackberries are going crazy. And speaking of blackberries, so my blackberry bush, at the risk of becoming a drama channel, <laughs> there's some tension with my new next door neighbor who has very recently moved in. You'll remember I did a lot of work restoring this blackberry bush and pruning it and um, training it and all this kind of stuff. And I had all my first year canes kind of trailed out because they were fighting with this. So I just kind of, instead of trying to string them up, I thought I'll cut the, cut the apples back next year. <laughs> And I did have a big trail coming out into this path, but this path isn't used. It's not a, um, it's not a trafficked path and in other bits, the path doesn't exist like further down the plot. Uh, but my next door neighbor clearly didn't like <laughs> that these were trailing onto their paths and they've come along with, <laughs> I don't know what it looks like. It's, it's not a clean cut, let's put it that way. Um, and they've absolutely butchered um, most of my first year canes. So it means I won't be getting any blackberries next year. <laughs> much like this year, but this whole area needs a bit of a rework. I am planning on expanding. Um, these two blackberries down here are not doing well, the ones that I tried to, um, tried to reproduce, but there's suckers springing up absolutely everywhere. So I think I'm gonna have one here and another one there. And uh, well, I mean, it is kind of a communal area, isn't it? But I feel like it, they could have just had a word and asked me to uh, sort it out and I would have. But. Uh, Hey ho, next thing. <laughs> it does feel very, <laughs> a bit cheeky talking about drama on the channel, but I've been on this plot for two years now and that's the first sign of any trouble I've had with neighbors. So I'm really hoping that that doesn't become a thing. But anyway, moving on. You can see actually the path, the first path has been turned over, over there. So it's a complete mess at the moment and I'm just kind of letting that break down for a little while. And I'm probably gonna do the same with this one. But before that, um, I want to get the rest of my potatoes up. I still got some King Edwards in here 
and it's really nice getting everything just kind of ready for winter. I'm going to get the beds done, this turned over, and then start planting the cover crops. And it's just such a relief to sort of, I don't know, there's something nice about the season winding down and, you know, the list of the to-do list just tails off and you can start to catch your breath. So let's get these potatoes up. A little while later and you can see the pile of King Edward potatoes that I've got here. <laughs> I did speak a little bit about them but then I forgot to turn the microphone on. <laughs> but they've been bagged up and they're ready to go now. I'm really happy with them. A lot of them are on the small side but I think that's just because I planted them a little too close. My next job is looking at these paths. In last week's video I explained that I was kind of going to change up the paths and the beds and this is quite a nice little bite-sized job i'm only really doing one at a time just when i've when i've got the time instead of making this it this big thing that i've got to do in one day um, which is quite a nice manageable way of doing big jobs on the allotment i think but you can see it's all full of all this dead stuff that i've mown and just let sit and kind of degrade but that's fine i'm gonna work it back into the soil get it dug over and then we'll talk cover crops so my main objective here is just getting this turned over. It's not going to be ready to grow anything in, but I'm just turning it over, stopping any weeds growing, and I'm looking for bindweed and that kind of thing. At a later date, a bit later on, I'll come along and I'll amend all of these bits with compost and dig that into the soil properly and get it loosened up. But for now, just removing stones, bindweed, bramble, that kind of stuff. <sighs> well, <laughs> that was a lot harder than I expected because of the heat <laughs> it's so so hot today so i think i'm going to call it a day just because i'm struggling and i'm wearing the wrong clothes but i'll be up again <laughs> well, i'll be back up during the week to finish off some of the beds and sow those cover crops and talk a little bit about them <sighs> Ooh. so we're back <laughs> It's been a little while since I finished digging that path over. I was meant to come up the very next day and uh, it's now like a week later. <laughs> We're on to Friday, but the sun is still shining. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I mentioned recently in a video that I wasn't really going to be doing many overwintered crops this year. I did try a few last year and I just felt like they weren't really worth the effort. You know, it was kind of nice to have something growing, but it grew so slowly and the slugs were just kind of having more use of it than I was. So this year I'm just gonna cut my losses. I've still got some things growing over winter, my purple spray and broccoli and my leeks. Of course, probably not gonna be doing garlic either. So I'm gonna have a lot of empty space and a lot of empty beds. And if you look around allotments, you see a lot of bare earth and it very quickly gets colonized by weeds. And it's not rocket science. If you go into any kind of natural ecosystem or habitat, you won't find much bare earth, you know, plants are very well adapted to taking these kind of micro habitats and colonizing them. You know, that's what they're built to do. As soon as, as soon as there's a space where a seed can grow and thrive, it will do. So what I want to do is cover these over and a great way of doing that is cover crops, which I'm really excited by because I've never done them before. So full disclosure, this is video is mostly based on research as opposed to personal experience but what is quite cool is that I've still got a lot of things in my bed so I've got some courgettes some butternut squash and they're going to be in there a little while longer it doesn't really make sense for me to rip them out yet so I can plant these cover crops in kind of stages and see how they grow up at, at different stages and that should be quite interesting so the thing about cover crops is that there are probably hundreds of them maybe a slight exaggeration but there's loads and loads of different cover crops you can use and they all do something slightly different so i've got a kind of off-the-shelf mix here but it's going to be really good for my plot now i've been digging through and one of the things i have have an issue here with is compaction. This is a really good example just as I'm digging over the path. You get these solid lumps, like these massive slabs of soil where the clay is kind of old and compacted. It's not been dug for years and there's not much organic matter or life. You know, I'm not finding many worms as I'm digging this. It does come apart with digging, but that's more like a plaster than an actual solution. What you really want is organic matter, compost, manure, green manure, cover crops, that kind of thing. And there's one species in particular in here that should do really well, and that is a daikon radish. And 
what I'm going to do with those radish plants that come up, they burrow really deep. Burrow? That's probably the wrong word for a plant, isn't it? They, they grow really deep into the soil. They're like a long radish. And when it, when it gets towards the kind of end of winter, what you do is you just lop the tops off and you leave the radish root in the soil to kind of decompose. What it does is it breaks up the clay and leaves this kind of reservoir of organic matter. And over time, that will kind of really help to loosen up the soil. Another thing I, I'm kind of struggling with is just trying to get biomass into the soil. There's not huge amounts of life. There's not huge amounts of worms and organisms, you know, that I can see when I dig. And that's a little bit concerning. And most cover crops will do the job of adding biomass when you cut them down and kind of let them sink back into the soil or gently work them into the surface. And something that long time viewers might have noticed is that there's one crop that I don't really grow that most people do, and that is the legumes. I don't really do peas or beans and no particular reason, they're just not my favorite things to grow. But legumes, of course, everyone knows that they have a vital role to play in fixing nitrogen from the air, and they bring it down into the soil through those kind of symbiotic relationships with microorganisms. It's so, so fascinating. But there's two in here. There's white clover, which is a traditional part of grasslands. You know, everyone knows what clover looks like. And as well, there's hairy vetch, which is quite a cool plant to be growing in its own right, and one that I'm hoping I will really enjoy seeing, provided it does actually germinate. And when I work those back into the soil, they should do a really good job of fixing a load of nitrogen and converting it into a non-soluble kind of biomass that can be taken out by plants and stays in the soil for a much longer time than any kind of liquid feed or anything like that. So loads and loads of good stuff in here. Hopefully I'm going to get one of the beds turned over and start sowing some. One thing you do want to know is that you want to try and get as good a weed as you possibly can because as these start to sprout, you kind of want to be sure that what you're growing is new cover crops and not old weeds. And when they're really tiny, it's difficult to tell. But all I'm doing is sprinkling the seeds. I'm going to give these a little layer of compost on top just because, well, they can't really hurt. And it should help to stop them getting eaten by birds as well. And then water them in. So not just one, but two quite big changes to the way that I do things on the allotment. I'm so excited to be doing cover crops. <laughs> silly. I do get excited about the silliest things, but I really wanted to do them last year and I didn't, I didn't quite get the chance to. And it's just, it's really, really good practice. And hopefully we'll see some benefits for the soil and my plants next year. If you want to follow along with the experiment, make sure to like and subscribe, do the usual YouTube stuff, and hopefully I'll see you again next time.